Greg here from Oathbound Gaming coming at you with another early access review. We've been doing a lot of co-op games here at Oathbound Gaming, but we decided let's bring some single player into this. Let's uh, let's take a look at a game called Edge of Eternity. It's a single player turn-based RPG, very story rich, kind of like your uh, your Final Fantasy. Got Cloud up there. I got I got to point out Cloud. But I enjoy single player games every once in a while. Sometimes my friends aren't on. My my co-op partners are busy doing something, they're at this horrible thing called work, and I need a single player game to play while I wait for them to, uh, to pop on. So let's take a look at Edge of Eternity, let's go. Edge of Eternity does a great job at building a world. It makes you feel like the world is vast, it's got a lot of different type of areas, and there's no area that makes me say, oh, I've seen this already. You know, every area seems to have those different type of aspects to it, whether it's the wide open plains like this, or darker areas, or cramped quarters like your caves, it does a good job at making you really feel like there's a vast world out there that has all sorts of different aspects and designs to it to, uh, to see, to explore. It's not all forests and plains and small camps. There's also cities in this game, and they do a really good job at making you feel like a city is actually a city. It's got a large population, a lot to do, upgrades, shops, all that good stuff. Edge of Eternity has turn-based combat, and some people probably don't enjoy turn-based combat, but there's times when I like a more simpler approach to my games, and this game does it well. It's simple in, in the sense that, yes, the, the combat is turn-based, but it's, it's more in-depth when it comes to strategy and making the correct moves to win some of the, the tougher fights. The camera can be adjusted from a tactical view to a dynamic view, which is more like cinematic, like closer down to the ground. I prefer the tactical view like this, so I can make uh, more wise decisions about what I'm going to do in combat and see more of the... What's going on? Who's positioned where? So, Darian over there, this guy here, he's your typical melee. Does a lot of physical damage, swords, that type of stuff. And a lot more tanky. Selene is your caster. Obviously weaker, takes more damage, less health, but she can dish out a ton of damage, as you can see. At the end of combat, you do get a uh, character experience and weapon experience, as well as, of course, consumables, money, stuff like that. The game does a good job at bringing some unique uh, elements to a fight. As you can see, one of the enemies is marked with a target there. On the left side of the screen, you're going to see an optional objective to kill the marked enemy first. If we kill him, we'll get an additional reward. There are randomized side objectives in combat that if you accomplish you'll get various rewards such as crafting material, money, potions, whatever it may be. You can earn yourself additional rewards by focusing on those, by completing them. Some of them make the fight a little bit more difficult, like uh, don't use magic, don't hit them with their weakness. So it's, it's interesting to see what you're going to get when you enter combat, both in the sense of the rewards and the tasks you have to complete. In this fight, we're up against two enemies. One of the things I wanted to show you here is the targeted locations for enemy spells. You see that red hexagon there? That's an indicator of where an enemy spell is going to land. So I already started my cast with Selene, so I won't be able to take the, her next turn, because when her spell cast ends, she's going to take the spell cast action. Luckily, it's strong enough to kill the enemy and just end the fight. But if I was to stand in there when that went off, I'd take... A fair amount of damage. At the end of the fight, you get experience for your weapons and your character. The weapons are already maxed, and also whatever rewards you get. The character progression system is actually quite advanced. If you go to this crystal section here, you'll see, well, the crystal sockets, I suppose. You're going to socket your, your crystals in. You get different crystals throughout the game, and you can socket them, and they do different things. The yellow ones go in the yellow sockets, green and green, and so on. I just socketed a yellow one into a socket, and it will unlock a weapon spell, Lightning Strike. So now I have a new ability for Darien. And these sockets, the ones that are available, are based off the equipped weapon. Obviously there's pants, boots, all of that good stuff. So if I go and equip this Wild Fang rather than the Dawnbreaker, and I say, yes, I want to remove the crystals from it, 
because I want those back so I can use them again. And if I come back here, you'll notice the tree is a heck of a lot different and larger than with the other weapon. So you'll get all sorts of different routes you can take, different weapons, different type of stats that you can allocate. And I loved seeing this. I, I was pleasantly surprised by it. Here I'm going to socket this yellow one. And you'll see it'll close off the path to the left as I socket the green gemstone. So you have to choose a path. You can't just take everything. So that's a limiting factor. You can't just have everything, which I, I like that too. I think that's how it should be. So there's a reason to explore more and get better weapons so you can put more crystals in later on. So one thing I'm really sick of in these type of RPGs is lighthearted stories where everyone's going to be all right, everyone makes it out, and everyone's super happy at the end. Well, I was pleasantly surprised to see right off the bat in the game, people die. Characters sacrifice themselves, and it's not always happy. So while this may be a slight spoiler, this happens really early on in the game. So if you do pick this up, just know 20 minutes in, you're going to see this scene, and you won't have that spoiled for you anymore. <laughs> Love it. Really happy to see that this game's not scared to pull their punches and go a little Game of Thrones-esque with, uh, with the character deaths. I'm not leaving you out there alone, Sill. Open up! Open it, Sill! Get the priest to safety. Save Harian. Survive. Do it for me. Shut up, Sill! I still owe you a date, remember? Open up! We'll beat this thing together! Just open the damn door! Goodbye, Darian. Still! Still! No RPG is complete without a furry companion, right? So a few hours into the game, you're going to get this thing called a Nekaru. He is awesome. Or is it a girl? I'm not sure. Whatever. Anyway, it makes world exploration great. It makes it fast, fun. I, I started going out a lot more to explore everything because I just wanted to ride this thing around more. While you're exploring, you get to see these orange little waves. And if you follow them, you will find some hidden buried treasure. Your Nekaru will dig it up, and bam, in this case, it's a nice staff. Good job, buddy. The game has a very large amount of side quests, so it's not just a, you know, final hallway situation. There's plenty to do, plenty of extra stuff to do. This quest here says, if you value your life, don't go to this, um, this lighthouse. And because we don't value our lives, that's exactly where we're going to go, because that's what we do in RPGs. As with all early access games, we like to take a look at more than just the game itself. So here we take a look at the uh, release dates, December 5th, 2018, that's when it came to early access. And if we come here to the news post and check out those official announcements, we'll be able to review all of the updates. As you can see, December is filled with them, November is filled with them, October, they had a Halloween event, they had uh, a recent chapter launch recently, and one thing I took note of was this one here. Before, Darian looked like he was very sickly, and afterwards he looks quite a bit more healthy. So it's nice to kind of take a look into this and see that the dev team never went silent, never abandoned the community, they kept those updates going, and I'm proud to say that I think these guys are going to deliver a great product, which should be released towards the mid of 2021, I believe. Edge of Eternity's developers also posted a roadmap, which we love here at Oathbound Gaming, because we can check them and kind of hold the devs to them. Sometimes the developers kind of go silent, but I'm glad that Edge of Eternity did not do that. Chapter 6 was actually just released, so that would actually be checked off on this one, and as we can see, around mid-2021, the game should fully release. So I hope you guys enjoyed that first look at Edge of Eternity. 
as with all early access games, we're going to come back in six months and uh, take a look at it, give you guys an update, see what, what, what popped up, what new updates popped up, did the devs follow through, have they continued their development, and uh, is it a game worth picking up? RTX 3080. You know I got to plug that, right? If you want to win this RTX 3080, head to OathboundGaming.com and enter today. And please like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon if you want to receive notifications because your support is what keeps these videos going. It's what keeps this channel going. So if you like this stuff, please show a little bit of support and just click that little subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Skidah!